keep, keeping along the same way, uh, what, in what ways do you keep ministry leaders, once, once you identify them and kind of affirm them, uh, what ways do you keep them focused on the ministry or, or the mission of the community? Yeah. Um, yeah, we, as I've said many times already this morning, we always have to answer the why. And so the, uh, when we stand up, whether it's ministry leaders or it's even our people, we often are saying, we're going to do baptism, and it may seem obvious to you, but here's why we do it. Here's why we do communion. Here's why we, ha- why we meet once a week. Here's why we serve in the community. And if we can't answer the why, that we, uh, people say, I know why, I know why. We would rather hear that than, why are we doing this again? Like... I don't see a point to this. And so that is important in terms of reminders is answering the why. The other reminder for us is that we tell stories because stories inspire more stories, right? And so rather than me getting up and telling people, how much better is it that one of um, someone that's leading, a lay leader gets up and they share a story of what that looks like? Because I think stories inspire more stories in our faith community. Oftentimes, we as pastors can lose credibility because people say, well, you're paid, you're supposed to say that. That's your job. You're a professional Christian. You're paid to love Jesus. You have to do that. Professional Christian. And, and so when you get I've others, I've been to semi-pros. He's in the big leagues. <laughs> so when you get when you that get got, others, I really got a response out there. <laughs> so so when you get others who are willing to do it and say, "This is my life. This is my story." We've got to learn to tell more stories, and stories remind us of what we care about. Oh, that's why we do what we do. So stories and and answering the why are, are two big things. So you keep them on mission by you know if someone comes up with an idea yeah you go well why do you want to do that and if they say you know because you know we want to blow up yeah people you go that's not really consistent with the mission yeah or in services (laughs) or in services um (laughs) we may do q a like this and so i may toss out a few questions to them that help answer the why so my goal is to loft softballs and let them crank them out of the park and then at the end i say this is what i love because what they're doing is tying back to what we care about you know how we've been saying this this is a great expression what you know, Carol's doing or what Sue is doing or what Joe is doing is tying back to why we do what we do here. And I think that's important. But when you lob the softballs, how many answers are Jesus? Uh, we actually have a, um, a saying, um, a, a guideline, if you will, when we have open discussion, we say, uh, we will not answer in cliches or in Christianese. We have to learn to be creative and communicative, communicative in our language that even non-believers can understand. So, and I say, I will actually interrupt you if you share something that is sort of, sort of Christianese and is in a subculture language. And I will say, can you restate that? We've all got to learn to get out of our subculture. And so we actually will interrupt them. So if it's God, Jesus, the Bible, I will say, I need a different answer. <laughs> Jesus, not the answer. Jesus is the answer. <laughs> talking about Jesus, talking about Jesus in subculture language is not the answer for our culture. Just clarify. Okay. Jesus, Jesus is not the answer. That's a, that's a bad thing to do in a church. <laughs> Your turn. Um, Begin. The end. The end. Yeah. Well, no. How do you, how, yeah. How, well, not necessarily accountability, but just how you have a leadership team. How do you keep them focused on the mission of the well? And you've had problems with that, so I want well, to find out. Yeah, and it's a, it's a similar thing. We just keep on saying, this is why we exist. This is, like, I think people might get sick of me saying it, but, like, we exist for the sake of the world. We exist for the sake of the world. We do not exist for the sake of ourselves. We're studying Acts 2 this week. And one of the neatest things about this passage is, it's 2, 42 to 47, and, you know, like, they all met together in homes and broke bread and prayer, and we're all like, this is what we want to be. We want to be this. And the reason they did that, the reason they start kind of gathered that lifestyle together was because of their call to be a witness by Jesus two chapters early. Jesus says, be a witness. They're like, okay, we need to be a witness. Holy Spirit just came. That was crazy. There's 3,000 of us now. What are we going to do? Um, let's make sure we don't forget who Jesus was. Let's do, let's do communion together. Let's pray a lot. Let's be devoted to that. Let's, let's really make sure we know what Jesus taught through the apostles. And mm, maybe we should fellowship together too. And that was all around the fact that they were called to be witnesses. Not because like they want to be a cool community. And I think often as in churches, and we're tempted to do this too because we have this family metaphor, we get the cart before the horse and we're like, we want to be a great community. Oh, wait, we should be a witness too, by the way. No, 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 no. We should be witnesses, therefore let's be a good community. Mm-hmm. And 
the interesting thing in that passage is, is that you know, at the end it says they were um, the, the, basically the, the people around them looked upon them favorably. They had great favor among all the people. Mm-hmm. That didn't last for very long. Um, you know, I, that's, it's usually for the part of the sermon where I say, you see, we should be in the lo- we should be local, locally involved and people should be glad that we're here. Well, n- yes, but we should be saying, oh, by the way, Jesus is Lord. That's going to take some people off. And especially in that culture, that really takes some people off. And so, in a sense, if they wanted to stay in this Acts 2 church, they had to stop saying Jesus is Lord. And so they, had to, they would have had to put community as a priority over witness. And so this is a big challenge for us, is we love our community. I mean, I don't feel like I have to get up in front of the well and be like, we need to be a family. we got to get it straight. No, we're a pretty good family. We need to get better at it, and we need to make some improvements. No, we need to make sure witness is the reason that we're a family. And we have to keep on thinking that way, or else we're going we're gonna to get lost. And we're going to get so insular and so, like... You know, the, the modern world version of a family is it's all about like, taking care of your kids and growing like your 401k so you can retire and give your kids an endowment or whatever so they can have a good home too. Well, that's not like what God calls the family to be. Mm-hmm. God calls the family to be a witness and a testimony to him, himself and a fraction of who he is. And so that's how God calls our family too as a church is to be a witness to the world of who he is. And so um, they, we talk about being a church for the sake of others all the time. Mm-hmm. And our leadership team meetings are always back hopefully, and sometimes we get off track, is why are, we, why are we the church? Because we're called to be the church. So as we talk about budget, as we talk about all this stuff, mm-hmm. it's about us being a witness. Um, we don't, you know, we, you know, it's a cliche. We, weren't, we don't, like, our entire church is the mission. Like, we don't, like, you know, I went to a missions conference, and they're like, you know, how do you guys do missions at your church? I'm like, well, that's what we do. <laughs> Like, we are a church, and we're the mission of the church is the mission of the church and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and Todd, I want to jump in. I, Todd's church, the well is doing a much better job than Resonate, and I'm just going to say that up front, and I love that. And we've been challenged this past summer by um, a guy in the city by the name of Steve Huber, and when we invited him to come teach. Um, he, uh, he, he runs Liberty Church, and uh, along with Jeff Bradford, he said something amazing. He said, the church is the only organization set up not for itself. Mm-hmm. And so sort of the mantra is, we are here for people who are not here. We are here for people who are not here. And if we're anything other than that, we are not doing the mission of Christ. Period. And so that's a hard thing. Mm-hmm. Because then preferences get in the way and it gets real sticky. Right. right? And so, but we are here for people who are not here. Um, I think the other thing, even as you were mentioning, Todd, about communion uh, in the Acts 2 passage, is we're all forgetful people. And so we have to say the why, because as humans, we are forgetful people. Right? I mean, even behind us here, you know, the communion table, in remembrance of me, remember, remember, remember. If you could sum up the book of Deuteronomy in one word, it would be the word remember. Because we are forgetful people. And how do we remember? Remember, we have symbols. And so there are certain symbols in every faith community that need to be identified. A picture, a thought, a story. Um, um, Obviously, the cross being the greatest symbol we have to remind ourselves when we forget what we're doing and why we're doing it. But ultimately, we are here for people Mm -hmm. who are not here, period. And the thing with, I don't think I said this, with Acts 2 is we have to be willing to sacrifice our picture-perfect community for the sake of those people who are here. Like, if, if next week 3,000 people join the well, we'd have a space problem. But I think a lot of us, while the initial excitement would be there, it would wear off real quick. Oh, wait a minute. But I like my little thing. I like this. Mm-hmm. And I don't think most of us are prepared to make that sacrifice. I know I'm not. I know I'm like, ah, I love the idea of growing, but I, I would really like to have my community. Um, and, and the early church sacrificed that or else we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, the greatest barrier uh, in terms of church health and growth isn't uh, secularism. It isn't evil. I think it's consumerism of the people with inside, <laughs> with inside the church. And that our preferences get in the way uh, more than we think. The preferences get in the way. When I'm mad, it's because my preferences in regards to resonate have been messed with. <laughs> Not out of absolute convictions but out of preferences. Yeah. And well, we've constantly got to remember <laughs> that we are here for people who aren't here. Yeah, we, we, our deacons uh, kind of, I've forced them into it, but they institute, the mantra is when we make a decision to do something, uh, if, if 
I like it that way is the reason for doing it, yeah. that's not acceptable. That's great. You have to have, to have a, a purpose beyond that. Because I like it that way, you can't do anything with it. You're stuck. Yeah. So.